He's going to make sure that you realize, and don't forget, that this is a two-part party here. Okay, you, you, not only do you need to get these commandments, you better hold on to these commandments, which are basically based upon what? Laying down your life for the brethren. It's very simple. Let's move on to number nine. Eight, of course, is the Lord is telling you there are going to be two challenges in your life, basically, for you to hold on to this salvation. Lay hold, as Paul said, of salvation. Let's move on to nine now. Okay, he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father. So now the Lord cares for you so much that he's going to give you and announce to you, you get Father's love and his love. Now, since they're both love, you're getting the same love. However, there are two persons in one person. Okay? And neither one of them will ever contradict the other one. That's why the Master just said, you, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because we think on the same parallel. We never think differently. However, he says you're going to get two, so now you get double love now. Okay. Well, the Lord cares for you so much that he set you up for not only his love, but you're going to get Father's love too. This is amazing. Let's go to 10 here. Uh, 1424, he that loveth me not, and keep not my commandments. Okay, so I care so much, I'm a caring person, and if people don't care for me, I don't know who they are. I'm putting it in, and I'm giving you my own kind of take on this, um, but I'm letting you know that, that this is kind of like my American perspective of this, <laughs> And uh, you can read it, you know, it's right there for you, uh, which is 1424. Uh, you can read it. Uh, he, let's go read it. He that loveth me not, he that loveth not me not, keepeth not my sayings. So people who don't love Jesus Christ, they're not going to keep these commandments. In other words, now he's taking it to part two. This gets a little complicated, so hold on. What he's doing right now is he's going into part two here. And we're going to have to go into the second segment because this is so deep, I went into the next video. Um, this is smoking stuff here. Let's, uh, let, let's go back to 10 because this is monstrous. I said to you before, this is the most important part of your Bible, and I would probably say so. We can make a debate about that, but I say that this is top drawer. This is where you get bottom line information. This is where you get faith, hope, and love. This is where you get successful faith without even mentioning faith. That's how important this is. This is being faithful without even saying you're faithful. You're, you're full of every kind of confidence in God by saying that you love Jesus Christ here. And, and that's what makes this so significant is this encapsulates everything. In other words, if you say you love Jesus Christ, you don't have any doubts about anything he, he, he might do. Powers, healings, prophecy. You just don't have any doubts. Now, this, this is huge here, 1424. I care so much. <laughs> See, I, I'm such a caring person that if you're not a caring person, see ya, I don't know ya. That's the point here. And the criteria or the litmus test for you caring about me and loving me is, am I hearing the commandments that I gave to you? And it's just the commandments are basically living bread or, 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 or denial and lay down my life conceptually based, then you better talk that way. That's the point. Uh, I need to hear you talk this way, dude. I need to hear you say, take up your cross and follow me. I need to hear you say, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. I need to hear the whole thing, the whole enchilada. And when I hear that, it validates that you love Jesus Christ. Now, 
Uh, how do you go about doing that? Let's let that go because I'm not talking about validating right now. I'm talking about the basics of validation. That's the point. I'm not here to elucidate validation. I'm just here to share with you the basics of validation of, of the love of Jesus Christ, which John and Paul say. That the love of Jesus Christ is laying down your life for the brethren. So it, we're, we're in one circle, aren't we? We're going round and round and round, and it's the same thing over and over again. Now, he loved you so much. Let, let's make one more point on this. He loved you so much that he is not going to allow people who are not lovers of him around you, and that's called sanctification. I'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, I think I have another point on sanctification. But this is a big part of sanctification because, because why do we want people hanging around us who don't love? We, don't, we, we have no fellowship. That's the point. I don't fellowship gangsters who shoot people in Chicago. I, I don't know them. We don't have nothing to talk about. Uh, and so the Lord is saying he loves you so much that people who, who people who you don't really need to be around, he's going to make sure that they don't hang around. That's what's going on here. And it's wonderful because that, that is love. Love is deliverance. Love is a superhero. Love is somebody who protects you. Okay? Okay, let, let's go. Let's Let's go to 11 here. We're, 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 I went into the next video here, and I hope it comes out right, because sometimes these video, uh, this uh, this calibrator, it doesn't work right, but that's okay. Let's move on. I can always give this lesson again. I will give this lesson in eight weeks again, because this is probably the number one lesson we have in, in, in all of Christianity. But we'll prioritize it top five. You know, something that, something that we'll repeat here all the time such as living bread. When the Master uses the word commandment here and love me, he's referring to take up your cross and follow me. It's very simple mathematics there, logic, okay? Fall on the stone. If you don't fall on the stone, the stone will crush you to powder. Okay, that's what happens. People who don't want love, God's going to chuck them. Let's stop the lesson for a moment. Let's have a summary. What are you doing, Jeremiah? The master is saying basically that people who don't want to love people, he's going to chuck them. See you. People who don't want to join the church, kneel down, acknowledge their creator, give thanks to their creator, you're toast. We thank God for being our creator and for giving his son for us. And we have other reasons. The beauty of the earth, we give thanks to God for beauty. That was big last year. I backed off of beauty a little bit this year. We'll be getting into beauty probably next week again. Beauty is one of the five, ten top things we talk about here every other week. What you're going to get when you go to heaven is beautiful. What's yours? What do you own? Right here it's love, but over here in beauty, it's, it's a tree that has beautiful fruit on it. It's a city that's yours. It's your city now. Where there are no evil people, no gang members, no, they're all gone. No lying politicians who want to start wars and, 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 and join some sort of military industrial complex or, or uh, uh, learn how to split an atom so we can destroy a city. That, that was Franklin Delano Roosevelt's goal. He said that he wanted to make a, 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 a critical mass bomb that blew a city up. And he took $500 million. How much was that? Five, it was a lot of money. Uh, I think it was $500 million. I, I forgot. He, to, to, in order to purchase a building that could make a bomb blow up a city. First of all, why do you want to blow up a city? And why take my tax money to, to learn how to blow up a city? I don't want you to learn how to blow up a city. Oh, we, we, need, we need to do that to defend ourselves. Oh, is that so? You know what I call that? A liar. You say, Jeremiah, you, you're, you're pretty bold. Well, you know what? I've been around the block. And I know when to be bold, okay? 
mean, you may disagree with that. Well, that, that that's your business. I'm telling you that, that, that Franklin Delano Roosevelt was a liar. And so was Einstein. And so was Oppenheimer. And so was NASA. And so, they're all liars to me. And I don't care what anybody says. What else I don't care is that I, I just, I know the truth. And I know that they're all basically liars. I know that. Human beings are basically liars. And I don't want to mention names. Let, 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 let's just say, I, I don't know for sure about Einstein or FDR. Let's just say that I'm going to tell you that a lot of these people are liars. Let's not mention names. They might have relatives out there or something. Uh, let, let, let me put it this way. There's a whole lot of lying going on. Let's just leave all the names out. Okay? Uh, why would you want to build a bomb that blows up a city for the defense of us, Americans? Common sense says you don't want to build a bomb that can blow up a city. You want to seek peace and let it go. You think because you have a bomb that can blow up a city, you're going to stop people from having war. What, what, what has it done now since they say that there's atomic bombs? Has it stopped a lot of war because people have atomic bombs? No, it hasn't. So for me, as, as an American citizen, I, I, I say don't make an atomic bomb. And, and let me make one more point before we wrap this up. I'm getting off the subject a little bit here, but let's think about this for a moment. America is the one, is the country that started making this deadly disease that went around the world. Do you know where, do you, do you know where they started making that disease? I think it was in Missouri and California. You say, Jeremiah, what are you talking about? The disease that just wiped out half the population of the world, the, 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 the Andromeda strain that was created was created in a laboratory. Now, the first question is, why would anybody make such a strain of some sort of disease that could wipe everybody out? First, why do you make it in the first place? That's, that's the first issue. Now, let me, let, me, let me add one more point. Because I saw the movie Andromeda Strain in about 1978 or so, and I walked out of the, I walked out of the theater. I was afraid. I was scared. Because they, 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 they gave me the impression that the people who made the movie Andromeda Strain, which was big in the United States here, that it was actually a very serious possible problem. That, that a certain strain of some sort of disease could get out and wipe out people. When I walked out of the theater, I was frozen. And it, and it just so happens that my fears were legitimate. That's my point. Now, let me make one more point on this medical situation. Then we'll get back to love here. The University of Boston just made a new disease, a variation of the last disease, which is twice as powerful as the one it was before that wiped out half the population here. And, not, and they were bragging about making this new disease that's twice as powerful from the old one. And they're boasting about making this disease in, in a test tube. And they said, don't worry, it won't get out. Okay, now you draw your own conclusions. That was like last year or so. They, 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 they made it in the University of Boston. So that's what you paid your students to learn when they went to college in America, was to make a, a virus or a disease twice as bad as the, the, the last one. Now, the first question for me is, common sense is, why did you do it? And then tell me it's safe or something, when the last one wasn't safe. Let's go back to love here. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Let's go to 12. 12 is peace I give unto you. So the Lord loves you so much. He cares for you so much. He wants you to be at peace. He wants you to not be troubled, which is the opposite of what he just mentioned, which was do not let your heart be troubled. In other words, the opposite of troubled is peace. Now he's going to say, I'm going to give you peace that the world cannot have. I'm going to give you peace of mind and, and so that your heart, excuse me, is not troubled. I'm going to provide that for you. 
because he is the Prince of Peace. That's his title. That's one of the titles in number 13 in this ministry. 13 is Titles of Jesus Christ, which I haven't finished yet. It's my final for you. For those of you who want to get into the titles and get into some vocabulary, what are the titles of Jesus Christ? One of them is Prince of Peace. It means he rules all peace. He's in charge of every environment that has peace. He knows how it's going to exist. He knows how to make it peaceful. He knows how to keep it peaceful. He know, he, uh, uh, he's the prince of it. That's the point. He's in charge. So you have come to him to love him and to take these commandments and put them on your heart. You now are going to have peace. What's interesting, of course, he's, he's telling you that, you that he loves you so much he's going to give you peace, even though he's going to allow you to go in through difficult circumstances. That's quite obvious if you're paying attention. Okay? Let's go to 13. How does the Lord care here? If you love me, you would be intelligent. Now, we already went to that. We're going back to it again. He cares for you so much that he, he understands that he's going, he's going to, it's a teaching moment right now. It, 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 and this is love. Love is learning. My, my parents and my dad, he especially, both of my parents taught me things. People who care about you, they're going to they're gonna teach you very important things so that you're intelligent because intelligence is a part of love. The point here is that if you loved me, 1428 John, the word is probably agape here. You can also call it oida in Greek. So it means that if you love me with emotion and brains, when I told you I was going away, you would be happy, not sad. Because you, your mind would think if he's going to father, that means things are going to get better. Because all he talks about is his love for the Father and how powerful he is. So now we're getting into intellect now. The Master is challenging them and telling them that you have, a, you have a care for me, but it's not intelligent care. This goes back to what the word agape means. It means high love and high intelligence. It means that you're paying attention to all of the facts and you're not losing track of all of the logistics. The master has just gone through in this chapter logistics on how to love him or how he loves you, and he's not missing a beat. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take you where I am. Uh, There's going to be a beautiful place to live. While you're waiting, I want your joy to be all the way full, and the only way for that to be full is for you to pay attention to my lessons. Okay, you need to pay attention here. Okay, and Father's going to love you too, and you know how to get to where I'm going. He's going through every step that's required that makes sense. We're, we're just about done here. We've got well, a few more things to say here. So in, in, in 13 we have, if you loved me, which means if you had an intellectual love for me. These guys are sloppy with their emotions so they don't have agape love. Agape love always organizes things. And I'll make this point one more time. If you had parents like me, you know that love is always thinking. You know that. You just don't walk around throwing your emotions everywhere. You think along with your emotions. And I have evidence for that because my, my parents, like hopefully your parents, um, uh, if, you, if you didn't have good parents, you got one now in Jesus, the everlasting father. That, that's your father now. But, if you did, but I had good parents, so I know that people who really care for you, they, they do a lot of thinking. I went over to a friend's of mine, uh, house, and one of my brother's friends a couple of years ago, and he started bragging about how much he loved my brother. 
And I looked at him and I thought to myself, he said he loves my brother. And I thought the first thing I thought about, where's the evidence that he loves him? Do I see evidence here? Now, I'm not out to love test people. That's not the point. That can be considered quick to judge and condemn people. That's called wrong answer. What I was doing was, was merely assessing what his behavior was. That's all. Did his behavior reflect a love for my brother? Yes or no? And I would say maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Because I like a lot of evidence for what you tell me. I want to see evidence. Then I can validate what you're saying. Let's go to 14. That the world may know that I love the Father. So how is the world going to know that Jesus loves the Father? Because the Father told him to go die for somebody worthless like me. And he went and did it. Anybody who goes through that, that sort of suffering for somebody like me, they are, they love Father. This is huge. So the Lord's telling me I care so much for you that I'm willing to go all the way and, and no, there's no greater love. We'll get to that in a minute. And that is, of course, John 15, 9 and 10. I'm, I'm going to deny everything in my life. Everything. And not only that, I'm going to suffer horribly to boot. So not, so not only am I going to deny myself uh, the enjoyment of possibly enjoying the world in my human body, I'm going to, I'm going to suffer horribly too. And that demonstrates my love. And, and, and you don't have to ask me about my love. Uh, it's right there in front of you. Okay, you, you want to know how much I care? Okay, go, go over to the cross and, and take, a, take, a, take, a, take a gander. <laughs> okay, and then we can wrap this subject up. Let's go to 15. I care because why? Okay, I care because I'm going to continue with this love. That, that's the thing. He, Jesus said, I want you to continue in my love. That goes back to his earlier commandment, which was to not only to hear, but to keep. In other words, he that hath and he that keepeth. So he's, he's going back to, 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 to acquiring Christianity and holding on to Christianity. He's going back to it again. Okay? That's how you continue in my love. So he's going back to 19, this ministry, which is Christianity is basically two periods of Christianity. You're learning and then hold on. Hold on to what you've learned. Hold on to the narrow path, dude. Let's go to 16. He cares so much, 15, that he wants you to continue, he, he, you know, back to the same old story of, you know, have your lamps trimmed for the rapture. You know, you're, you know, you're, the force is in you, and the force is working. You've got love labors from Father's river of love, and you're working. You're busy loving somebody somewhere. You're telling the truth to, of, of the gospel somewhere. Let's go to, let's go to uh, um, 16. So how does the Lord care on 16? I want your joy and your love to be full. We just mentioned that. And let's go back to that again. That your joy may be full. And this is the big one. This is, I want you to really be excited and happy. And, and, and the way to do that, and we just mentioned that, is... Is, is don't waver and wander around. Because when you wander around, the salt has lost its power. And when salt loses its power, it, can't, it, it loses its authority. Christians who are walking on a narrow path, they have a tendency to have the, the optimum life. That's the point. And that optimum life is based upon the joy inside of you, and it could be your conditions also physically. The bottom line is, is that the joy inside of your heart is not going to be uh, 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 quenched by you. And, and he cares for you so much, he doesn't want you to go through roller coaster joys of Christianity. And you, and you can remove those roller coasters by staying constant and steadfast. 
Okay? 17, we're just about done here. 17 is uh, what is, uh, oh, a repeat of the, the first um, commandment, or number three in the trifecta, number three in this ministry, which is the trifecta, okay? The, uh, to love the Lord with all of your heart, love your neighbor the way you love yourself, and to love as I have loved. And now he's going back to that number three in the trifecta, which is to love as I have loved. So he loves you so much, he's going to remind you again that this is the, this is the way we love. This is high love here, boys. And, and uh, I love you so much that I want you to understand that this is the royal command. And uh, once again, let me remind you that this is high love call. So obviously God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is not tired of telling you how much he loves you here. <laughs> I mean, he just keeps saying it over and over again. I mean, no great, now he's going to say no greater love, John 15, 13. There's no greater love hath no man than this. So Jesus is, is obeying the royal law. He's loving the Lord as God with all of his heart, soul, mind, and strength. He's obeying the gospel somewhat here. You know, he's doing what he's supposed to do. And, uh, and he is going to lay down his life and no, no greater love had no man than to do this. You can't love people more than this. Okay, are you getting the message here? <laughs> this, is, this is wonderful stuff. This is the best part of your Bible. There's no doubt about it, in my opinion. And we're not going to say it's the only great part or anything. But this is, this is huge. He told you he, told you he loved you all this time, all, all this, you know, repeatedly here. Then he kind of encapsulates everything by saying that no person has greater love than I have for you. That's how much I love you. That's how much I care. And, and you can see I love the Father because Father wants me to die for that piece of garbage, Jeremiah, and I'm going to go do it, and I'm pure, I haven't done anything wrong, and yet I'm going to go suffer for that rat. I'm going to forego my entire life, what's left of it, and, and go through a lot of pain for that piece of garbage, Jeremiah. I'm, I'm going to go do it. The last one. Let's wrap this up. We're done. I care, so I'm going to perform the actions, and I want you to perform the actions of denial, and I want you to think about the fruits of your life. One heroic moment after another. One challenge, one victory. One episode of John's mother, can you drink the cup? I'm going to drink John's mother, yes or no. She said, yes, I can drink the cup, meaning I can face all the challenges that you're going to face, Master, and I'm not above you. She said, bring it on. That's a real lady there. That, that's a tough, real, uh, uh, um, uh, bona fide woman. And the master is saying, I want you to encounter these, these fruitful experiences and face them and deal with them, and that's how we're going to win this, this warrior. Okay? So that's it for 19. The last one is basically tokens and fruit, meaning you're going to have a testimony of a life whereby that you face these challenges for the church, and you're going to care the way he did which is you, you care more for the people than necessarily your life because you're going to bring things to people that are going to bring them happiness based upon your denial and long-suffering. That's the point here. And there are going to be many episodes of this. You're going to help John, Cindy, Frank, George, the church, the pastor. You're going to do that. And we want that fruit to stay where it is. And, and, and that fruit will stay there if you don't mess around with the rest of your Christian walk. That's another aspect here, which he, which he mentioned a few times. 
You don't want all that fruit to go away. You want to stay on track, basically stay holy, stay humble, and all the things that you've been doing, they're not going to go anywhere. They're going to stay on your account in heaven as the Bema seat. It doesn't purchase your salvation, but there is a time of acknowledgement. Okay? That's enough. Jeremiah's done. Uh, we're done with this. This is monstrous, as many of you know. Um, when you get to John 14, it's very difficult to stop, but I'm going to stop. Okay? Maranatha, the person who wrote all of this, who has no greater love than any, he has like the greatest love. That person's coming any moment now, and we're just, we, we can't stop talking about it. We, we want out of here. We want to be with this person who loves you. That, that's what we want to be with. Don't you? Okay, that's this is all about it. This is very simple. It gets a little complicated, but you'll get it for those of you who are having a little problem. You just hang in there. Don't give me the quitter routine, which the master just mentioned here. You want to be fruitful and keep, keep that fruit coming. Keep those love actions going. Keep speaking the truth. Keep staying away from evil. That's all this is over and over again, right? Maranatha, shalom, and hallelujah.